Navraj I request all participants uh, kindly mute your uh, microphone and camera thank you Yes, sir. Welcome, sir. Ramesh, sir. Sir, uh, Ramesh Babu, sir. Our uh, Preston Thompson uh, GM also joined today. Oh, good, good, sir. Okay. Uh, Ramesh, sir. Ramesh, 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 sir. Ramesh, sir. Ramesh, sir. Ramesh, sir. Welcome, sir. I think uh, he could not hear our yes, voice. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, mute, mute. Yeah, he's typing in the chat box. Oh, okay. I request all the participants mute your camera and uh, microphone, please. Marasami, streaming has started now. YouTube. Uh, so, started, started, sir. Started. How, many, how many of them joined? 
I request all the participants to mute your camera and microphone, please. So can we start, sir? Can we show, sir? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can start. Yes. Uh, Gopinath, sir, my voice is clear. Clark. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Behalf of Department of Mechanic Engineering, Steve Vengdeshwara College of Engineering, Steve Parmandor, I welcome all, all of you to the one-day webinar on Deep Learning in Machine Vision System for Quality Control Trends and Challenges. I welcome our HOD, Dr. S. Ramesh Baba, Professor and HOD, Department of Mechanical Engineering. Welcome, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. My special welcome to our expert speaker today, Dr. Kiran Kumar Kudumala, Assistant Professor, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Indian Institute of Information Technology, Bazar, Telangana. I welcome you, sir. Now I request the HOD or HOD to address the gathering. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gopinath, sir. Uh, good evening yes. to one and all present here for this expert webinar on deep learning in mission vision system for quality control trends and challenges. On behalf of Mechanical Engineering Department and on behalf of Sri Venkateshwara College of Engineering and on my own behalf, I welcome our expert speaker, Dr. Kiran Kumar, Assistant Professor in Mechanical Engineering Department, Triple IT, Basa, Telangana State. I heartily welcome you, sir, to you, sir. Also, my heartfelt welcome to all the participants for enrolling this webinar with more enthusiasm. I want to say thanks to our coordinator, Dr. S. Gopina, Dr. M. Mohandas, uh, Mr. A. Kumaraswamy for organizing the expert talk on the current trust area that is deep learning. As we all are aware that there are certain terms which are a buzzwords right now. Among this, deep learning is one of the buzzwords. Initially, we thought that deep learning is meant only for CS or IT graduates. Now the topic is common for every field. So as an engineer, we all should have or know about the deep learning fundamentals and application with respect to our discipline. Dear participants, with your permission, I would like to say results of our department. Our mechanical engineering department was started in the year 1985. It is 35 years old department. Our faculty strength is 28 in number and in which 16 out of 28 are doctorates in various disciplines or a specialization. Three programs are run by mechanical engineering department. That is one undergraduate and two postgraduate program. We have one undergraduate that is B in mechanical engineering then two PG programs, that is a master's in mechatronics for which one of the coordinator, that is Dr. S. Gopina is a coordinator for this program and another program that is ME in industrial automation and robotics. Another coordinator, Dr. M. Mohandas is a coordinator for this program. And I'm happy to say that this ME in industrial automation and robotics will be commencing from this year onwards. Both the master's program curriculum are designed by industrial experts. The curriculum of ME in mechatronics focuses towards low cost automation and the curriculum of ME in industrial automation robotics is focusing towards various elements of industry 4.0. And this is a specialized syllabus which has been designed with nearly seven industry experts. So you all must be aware that reskilling and multi-skilling is the day order of the day and is very much essential to sustain in the current competitive world. So aspiring students who want to do masters in the current trend, that is either in mechatronics or industrial automation, can have, and who is having a thought, can visit our website www.svc.ac.in for information, or otherwise you can contact our coordinators. The key aspects or features of our department are the faculty strength and the state-of-the-art laboratories. Since both the programs are interdisciplinary, the students from various branches of engineering are eligible to join this course. And to know more about this, you can visit our website. And what are the key benefits of both our postgraduate courses? We have a management scholarship for tuition fee and 
for books. Okay, the manager, that is for a merit student, the fee, the tuition fee is completely waived. And also we have AICT Gates Scholarship for a student with valid Gates score. And we have intramural PG merit scholarship of rupees 5,000 per month for 20 months on certain conditions. Intramural PG research grant of rupees 12,000 to carry out innovative projects. The sponsorship for a student to attend conference in India and abroad, which other colleges do not do. So, do you want yes. Okay. Dear participants, if any one of you are interested, can contact any one of the coordinator for further information. And once again, on your behalf, I welcome our chief guest and also thank our coordinators for organizing this expert talk. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, now I request Morgan Das to introduce his chief guest. Yeah, uh, thank you, Professor Gopinath, sir. I am honored to have the privilege uh, to introduce the uh, guest speaker of today's webinar on deep learning in machine vision system for quality control trends and challenges, uh, Mr. Kiran Kumar Pudumola. Uh, Mr. Kiran Kumar has completed his UG, that is B Mechanical Engineering, from Vasavi College of Engineering, Hyderabad, uh, with the distinction. Uh, then he has completed his PG degree, that is ME, Engineering Design, from PhD College of Engineering, Coim to Tamil Nadu, uh, with uh, distinction. And he is doing his research in the field of composites design right now. And after uh, completing his PG degree, he traveled to Ethiopia and worked as lecturer for two years in Oro University there. Then he went to Eritrea, uh, there he worked as a lecturer in Eritrea Institute of Technology for the period of uh, two years. Then he came back to India and joined as a uh, joined as an assistant professor in B.S. Abdul Rahman University Chennai uh, on Tamil Nadu, and he worked there for a period of two years. Then he also worked as research associate in mechanic uh, mechatronics division of A.T. University Vellore, and presently he is working as the assistant professor in Triple uh, I.T. Uh, Telangana. Um, uh, Mr. Kiran Kumar has received a grant of uh, 5,000 US dollar uh, to carry out the research in the field of computer-aided uh, transient dynamic analysis with, while working in the Holo University, Ethiopia. And he is expert in uh, various uh, uh, softwares relevant to the mechanical engineering like uh, MATLAB and ANSYS. And he has published a textbook uh, titled MATLAB for Mechanical Engineers. And he is an editorial board member and peer reviewer, reviewer of the several international journals. And he received the Best Research Paper Award in Pestlemania Robotarian Competition. And he has published more than five research articles in the reputed international journals. So with this brief introduction, uh, let me hand over the session to Ms. Mr. Kiran Kumar. And before that, I would like to request all the participants to mute your microphone and switch off your camera. Thank you all. Sir, Kiran Kumar, sir, can you take over the session, sir? Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. OK. Uh, good evening to the uh, participants and the faculty who have uh, joined for this session. Uh, you have already got introduction of mine. Uh, I worked in uh, robotics uh, and uh, related to mechatronics. For past decade, I was working uh, related to the simulation of the systems. So this presentation I have focused on most of, at least 40% of the presentation is on introducing to the ma uh, machine learning and uh, deep learning. And 40% I'm going to focus on how you can implement deep learning in MATLAB, how you can implement deep learning by using Python program. So with my students, I have spent some significant amount of time implementing projects using MATLAB and Python programming. So I'm going to deal 40% of my lecture on that. Last 20% on giving you the references and uh, challenges we faced. So with this, I'll start my first slide. So basically, if you look at the field, as uh, HOD has given a brief intro, it was a presumption that it is only for computer science engineers or for electronics engineers. But the evolution of the deep uh, learning field, if you look at it, Artificial intelligence is the main global scenario. 
in that machine learning is a subset deep learning is a subset of machine learning so if you look at it sir so, yeah it is already in the screen share mode sir can't you see the next slide to stop sorry i'm not saying you should continue sir okay okay thank you thank you so what i'm going to focus is artificial intelligence as a global field computer science engineers have focused a lot but for the past decade for the past two decades mechanical engineers are using machine learning for their applications so basically machine learning is nothing but i'm going to talk about that in the next slide uh is a subset of artificial intelligence so basically artificial intelligence when you look about it it's like creating an equivalent machine which can think like a human brain simply speaking mimicking human brain you call it artificial intelligence but artificial intelligence has progressed like if you look at the current uh, words like uh, big data data science so on they are all subsets of artificial intelligence then when you look at machine learning machine learning was not comfortably useful for machine vision applications because that's our current topic so the necessity of developing deep learning has come into picture as you can see it is a subset of machine learning so what exactly uh, it consists of we will look upon in the next slides first of all i'll i'll give a short understanding some of you are beginners in this field so i just give you an intro on what is a machine learning how exactly you can apply machine learning for machine vision systems so if you look at the problem definition of machine learning you could see there basically for any machine learning system you require a data what do you mean by data that data can be temperature measured by temperature sensor or the image captured by camera or the strain measured by strain gauge so basically machine learning requires some input you can look at the left hand side uh, components in the diagram so that input is fed to a system that system is going to do the processing of that input and it is going to predict what is the final component you could see over there simply speaking in this diagram what you are saying is it is able to classify which kind of flaw is it or let us take it to mechanical engineering application i have cylindrical component i have a, a machine component i have a mill component i have a drill component i want to classify them which component is categorized into milling component which component is categorized into drill application so that we are going to look upon just by understanding what is a flow basic flow of machine learning if you see there the diagram focuses mostly on yes, training sir. data so your screen is not visible sir the present part is not visible blow pin to sir pin 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 you sir uh i just so want what? to get a confirmation no, you carry on sir it is visible They have to pin okay. this screen, actually. Present screen. Okay. Visible okay. screen. Okay. So, for the beginners, I'm just giving you an understanding. Somebody don't know what exactly is machine deep learning or nothing about this field. So, understand one thing. To understand machine learning or deep learning, the primary requisite is you require a data. You can ask me what is a data. Data is nothing but something measured by a sensor. That camera is a sensor. the strain gauge is a sensor temperature uh, temperature detection is the sensor so anything you get out of sensor that is called training data so to implement deep learning or machine learning some some of you can ask in that case can you tell me what is input for deep learning the images captured by your camera is input for your deep learning so for machine learning or deep learning what is a primary requisite is you require a data that is called training data next question what should i do with my data if you look at machine vision i captured lot of pictures of the components sir or i captured video of the conveyor system what should i do with that that data you should feed into algorithm the second component is learning algorithm you have to feed your training data what will i mean what exactly that learning algorithms we will look upon in the next slides you will be understanding next you have building the model so building the model is nothing but one example you have to understand let, let let me just give you a non classical example suppose for a competitive exam you are preparing 50 questions 
which means your preparing data is less. Say you have prepared 100 questions. You have done a lot of uh, effort on practicing. So you have to give a lot amount of data for training. Just by taking 10 pictures, if you are giving to the machine vision system, it cannot give you good accuracy. So building the model takes care of how much I have to do the training, how much I have to do for testing. So higher the training I do, higher I can perform in the testing. I have practiced only very less numericals. So my test results are going to be very poor. I do a lot of practice. I get good performance in my test, in my exam. So building model is nothing but categorizing how much data you should give to the simulation. Next, you have to perform the simulation. Simulation means whatever is the algorithm you have chosen, you have to run the testing. See what are your results, what are your inputs. What you will get, you got your output, you know what is your input. So what is the final sequence? You are getting a feedback. Feedback that to the algorithm. What do you mean? How much is the difference between expected output and your current obtained output? So that output is fed back to the algorithm. Now that algorithm rectifies your error and it continues the process. So that is a basic flow of machine learning. In short, yes, I'll give you what are, in short, I'll review what are the types in the machine learning. You could see their supervised, unsupervised, and reinforcement. Most of the cases you may get a doubt. Machine vision comes into which category? Or image processing applications comes into which category? Most of the cases of our machine vision applications comes under supervised learning. Some of the cases it comes under unsupervised learning. I'll talk about that in the next slides. But basically, what do you mean by supervised learning? Supervised learning, it is a task driven. I mean to say, you are giving certain input, you can predict what is your amount of output. That's a very simple point. Unsupervised learning, you are giving some input, but you cannot understand how exactly my system could behave. You have some idea, but you cannot tell quantitatively what is your output. Last one is called reinforcement uh, type of machine learning. Keep it in mind, the same applies even for deep learning also. So I'm just giving a review of these topics. So reinforcement uh, type of machine learning is nothing but algorithm has no idea of inputs, no idea of outputs. It is first time interacting with the system. Okay, that will uh, decide, okay, these are the inputs, these are the outputs. So with these inputs and outputs, let me make a cluster graph or let me make a performance indicator and decide what is the relation between inputs and outputs. That is called reinforcement algorithm. Now, I'll give you a short review on what are the methods available with the supervised learning. If you see there, the popular methods available with supervised learning are linear regression, logistic regression, decision trees, random forest, KNN, and nail based classifier. These are some of the methods. These are not the only methods, some of the methods. But if you look at the supervised learning, look at the diagram very keenly, please. You'll understand it. What is the first component of this? Training data. What did I say? Training data for machine vision system. The image which you are capturing is your training data. What is the learning algorithm? Just now we spoke. Linear regression method or logistic method or decision tree method, random forest method. What algorithm you can uh, use for your respective application? You have to choose that algorithm. Then build the model, test the model, check the accuracy. What did I say for accuracy? If you have 10,000 amount of training inputs, you get good accuracy. If you have 100 amount or very less amount of training data, you will be getting lower accuracy. At this point, somebody may have a query like, for which application, which algorithm should be chosen? Let me tell you one thing. There are encyclopedias on telling you which algorithm you should select. So that is not, uh, cannot be judged up in one hour or one day or one course. So I'll give you a short preview. Which algorithm you should select for which type of application? Okay, so first one, linear regression method. In linear regression method, if you want to perform or if you want to check out the surface finish of a component. So I will employ a root mean square method. So statistically, I can calculate it very straightforward. X is the input, I mean image is the input, surface finish is my output. So linear regression could be applied for surface finish measurements. Logistic regression, somebody may have a doubt. Linear regression means I give certain input, I get very predictable amount of output, numerically. But what is logistic regression? Logistic regression is not like that. Logistic regression will tell you only true or false. So what do you understand by logistic regression? Binary classification. You, all of you might have known about the decimal system. Zeros are false, ones are trues. So logistic regression will tell you only 
whether a product is acceptable product or a rejectable product so decision making or representing the acceptable rejectable components in quality control logistic regression method algorithm is applied decision tree what is the meaning of decision tree so decision tree um, algorithm helps you in identifying edge detection do i have a circular shape do i have a rectangular shape do i have a conical shape so understanding the features on the component decision tree algorithm is applied random forest i tell you only one thing random forest can be sorry decision tree can be applied only for one specified variety of component random forest can be applied for n numerous varieties of components so random forest is nothing but a group of decision trees say i have a milling component drilling component multiple varieties of components are there i want to categorize them for checking the quality of it on a conveyor so random forest should be applied when your part varieties are innumerous in number knn is applied when you want to know the surface defects by machining simply speaking you have to perform milling operation you have perform turning operation i want to know what is my irregularities on the surface so knn method is nothing but basically the term over there is it will try to identify similarities based on grouping into individual numbers neb based classifier the last method is nothing i mean it's one simple unique process it applies bayes theorem so it will try to identify for example on a conveyor there are five different varieties of components moving on i implemented a machine vision system by camera frame gabber and everything now my computer should tell me whether it is it is a circular component so what is the probability in five varieties of parts what is the probability of the component it should be a cylindrical component 1 by 5 so neb bayes classifier follows the bayes theorem principle and it will tell you what is the probability of that component it could be a cylindrical it could be an elliptical component let me progress further in a second type of method unsupervised learning as i could uh, tell you unsupervised learn has a very detailed uh, uh, application in mechanical engineering system especially in turbine analysis and wind turbine analysis not only that uh, unsupervised learning component i mean algorithm method the example you could see there it is called k means clustering example of unsupervised learning you could understand by the term itself there is no explanation of the data you have some data with you you should understand or you should predict some mathematical model out of it so example it is given there some picture or audio downloaded from internet but let me give you a good example on unsupervised learning in this you have no idea on unless until you touch a component you cannot predict the performance of it whether it is acceptable component or rejectable component so the best example of unsupervised learning is called principal component analysis best example is principal component analysis k means clustering has very limited application you understand by clustering clustering means grouping based on the observation of a final output but principal component analysis it will try to arrange the clusters and it will divide the principal components it will categorize them based on the similarities in xy plane if it is a two dimensional if it is a three dimensional analysis it will take a third component also it will try to decide what is the relation between the input parameters and output parameters and reinforcement learning method follows markov nonlinear model example is a q learning algorithm you have no idea on the inputs you have no idea on the outputs example is like finding the medicine for corona virus or you want to build a system you want to build a system perfectly now so robot doesn't know the coordinate position controller doesn't know the coordinate position so first time installation of a machine vision system comes under the reinforcement learning method so with this i wanted up the theory on introduction for uh, different algorithms used for implementing in machine vision now let me start an important topic on uh, implementing machine vision application neural networks if you look at the uh, uh, ideology of the neural networks it almost i like i told you whether it is a deep learning whether it is a machine learning whether it is artificial intelligence the main goal is replicating our human brain thinking procedure how our human brain thinks that equivalent you can replicate over here you can see left hand side diagram is a biological neuron right hand side diagram is artificial neurons what do you see is the difference is deep learning network when you are going further you will see 
it implements multiple set of neurons. So to understand the terminology, left hand side diagram is a biological representation. X1, X2, X3 are all inputs. Then you have dendrites, that is nothing but carrier terminals. Those carrier terminals are carrying the input to the next uh, components through cell body. Then finally, it goes to the output terminal, Y1, Y2, and so on. That's a biological terminology. Everybody might have been familiar. But let us look at artificial neural network, right-hand side diagram. What you see in the right-hand side diagram is X1, X2, X3 so are all inputs. I'll give a good equivalent. Can you tell me in machine vision, what is X1, X2, X3, Xn? The number of images you have captured by using the camera. Those are called inputs. What are W1, W2, W3? And so on till WN. So keep a point in mind. The efficiency of your deep learning network depends on your weights. So what are W1, W2, W3 and so on till WN? They're called as weights. Next, you go into the processing element. Can you look at the mathematical equation for processing element? Summation of XI, WI. Say I have 100 images. What is processing element? X1, W1, X2, W2 till X100, W100. I make clear, right? Next, we have B0. B0 is nothing but a bias. Bias is nothing but a fluctuation, a noise in this, I mean, initial perturbation or a fluctuation in the system. You call, it's a constant. B0 is a constant. It is called bias. Next, you have transfer function. Most of you may have a doubt over here. What exactly could the transfer function mean? In neural networks, or I can call it in deep learning, transfer function is called as activation function. Can you elaborate on activation function? Yes, I'll do it in the next slides. Okay. Now, what is output? Output Y1 is equal to processing element. I look at the mathematical expression over here. So what is the mathematical expression for the artificial neural network? F of X is equal to B0 plus summation I equal to 0 to N BI into WN, where BI is the input signal X1, W1, X2, W2, and so on. Then what is B0? I told you already, B0 is a bias, which is a constant. Now, let us look at that in detail. I have told you already many of the cases, but let us apply how exactly. You have told a lot about the uh, uh, description of machine learning and basics. Can you show me how exactly a deep learning example looks like? Yes, you can look in this slide. First diagram is nothing but you have input layer. I'll explain you both the diagrams. Second one is a very important one, but let us look at the first one. If you look at the first uh, diagram, you could see in input layer, you have X1, X2. What is called hidden layer? That is a point. More the number of hidden layers, more the number of processing it can do. So what did I tell you? Machine learning has less than three number of hidden layers. If you look at the diagram one, how many hidden layers are there? Only one. So can I call that a deep neural network? It is not a deep learning algorithm. So any hidden layers less than three, you should call it as machine learning. Any number of hidden layers more than three, okay, that you should, I mean, three or more than three, you should call it as a deep learning network. I'll explain in the later slides, but let us look at it. Can I call inputs as X1 and X2? Sure. Can I call output as Y1? Sure. What, are, what is hidden layer? In hidden layer, you see there are three circular globules. Sorry for not indicating. They are called H1, H2, H3. So what does hidden layer consist of? H1, H2, and H3. But somebody can understand or can somebody explain me what are weights? Input has how many signals? I mean, X1 has 1, 2, 3. So how many weights are there for input 1? W1, W2, W3. How many weights are there for second input? W4, W5, W6. Then if you look at the next component, I mean in the next one, those hidden layer are sent into the next one, which are called as output layer. I have not yet dealt with activation function. I will discuss about that in the next slides. But if you look at the second diagram, you see there how many inputs are there in the second diagram? Three inputs. How many outputs are there? I'm supposed to obtain three different parameters in output. But how many hidden layers are there? You could see there hidden layer one, two, and three. Okay. If you see W are called weight, B is called bias. Same for hidden layer two, same for hidden layer three. In output layer, you, you could see in output layer, in hidden layer one, hidden layer two. Uh, I'll explain you in shortly here. 
input signal is coming to weight. Can you see in the second diagram? Sure. Then from weight, inputs uh, weight is, I mean, x1 into w1 is summated with bias. x2 into w2 is summated with bias. x3 into w3 is summated with the bias. But after summation, yes signal, you see there is one signal block. That is called activation function or transfer function. Now, sorry, I'm going to give you a short understanding on for which kind of applications, which activation function is selected. Without any doubt, I'm going to tell you now itself, can you see uh, a function called ReLU function, which is called rectified linear unit? You mark my word, in all the machine vision applications, the predominantly 90 to 95% used activation function is called ReLU function. What is the abbreviation of ReLU? Rectified linear unit. I'm going to focus, I mean, we are going to see a lot of applications on this. But anyhow, let us see what is the job of activation function. For example, you are using a vibration shaker. If your input to the vibration shaker is a harmonic, what is the equation? Sine omega t plus phi. If your input is a step signal, if your input is an exponential signal, e power x. Am I right? So activation function is nothing but what input you are providing to the system for running. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> So what are the types you could see there? Step function, sigmoid function, hyperbolic tangent function, ReLU function, and soft max function. And I'm saying once again, you remember my word, the last function called soft max. Keep it in mind, without soft max, there is no deep learning network. Deep learning network, image processing, because our topic uh, deals with image processing. So image processing output is done just because of soft max function. So out of these five activation functions, the very, very important functions used for machine vision are uh, rectified linear unit and softmax. I'll give a short uh, review on it. Step function, basic understanding you can get from this graph. What do you see there? If x is less than zero, output is zero. If x is equal to zero or greater than zero, you can see output is one. A simple understanding. At zero, instantaneously it goes to one, it stays as it is till that point, unless until x becomes less than zero. Now, keep it in mind, step function is also applied for machine vision application, but not for deep learning application. So what do you mean by that, sir? So step function is mostly employed in machine learning algorithms, not in deep learning algorithms. Okay, that's a simple point I would like to quote. Sigmoid function. What is the limit for sigmoid function? Lowest bound limit is along y-axis. You could see lowest bound is 0, uppest bound is 1. So sigmoid function is almost like a modification of a step function. Okay. So sigmoid function is also employed in uh, machine learning algorithms Okay, for lower processing applications. The equation is f of x equal to 1 by 1 plus e power minus x. Next, you have hyperbolic tangent function. Hyperbolic tangent function is not applied for machine vision application. Reason is, look at the bound for hyperbolic tangent function, minus 0 to 1. So any image, do you uh, expect it to go to the lowest bound in a negative uh, zone? So between 0 to minus 1, your values are trimmed off. Say, sir, I have tried hyperbolic tangent function for machine vision. What will happen is, half your images will be trimmed off. Reason is between 0 to minus 1, it is not an advisable function for machine vision cases. Now comes the concept called recti, I mean recti, uh, rectified linear unit function. In this, you could see that the function is f of x equal to maximum of 0 to 1. So ReLU function is very predominantly used in convolution neural network, which is a very popular algorithm in deep learning methods. Okay, soft max function. I was highlighting you the application of soft max, but I did not give you what is an example of it. I'll give you a good example. On a conveyor system, a cylindrical component is there, a rectangular component is there, a, a conical component is there. I want my machine vision system to identify only cylindrical components. What do you want to do? You want to find the probability of, I captured an image. In that image, I have cylinder, I have core, I have rectangle. What should I do? Write the algorithm or to use softmax. Softmax function is e power z of variable z, uh, sorry, j. j is from 1 to k divided by summation of k equal to 1 to k exponential e power z k. Simply speaking, 
it will give you the probability of the component which it is a cylinder so how it will give you it will try to find the probability cylindrical component will have higher probability trapezoidal component or conical component rectangular components will have lower probability so soft max function is used in convolution neural networks which is a very very important algorithm in machine vision system and next one is called cost function simply speaking cost function is also called mean square error so whether you want to try machine learning or deep learning or anything for our mechanical systems understanding on statistics is very preliminary basic concept so if you see there c is called mean square error that is summation of y minus a whole square by n where y are called actual values and a are called predicted values so cost function is not applicable for higher learning algorithms but basically it will try to find the error in your uh, algorithm what you have created next cross entropy is a solution when compared with the cost function what is cross entropy minus 1 by n summation multiplied by i equal to 0 to n y into natural log of a plus 1 minus y into natural log of 1 minus a what it will do so cross entropy has higher learning capability when compared with the mean square error so most of the algorithms used for the deep learning have cross entropy as predefined uh, input in the deep learning now a very important algorithm which i am going to share is called gradient descent algorithm so gradient descent algorithm somebody may have a doubt what is the goal of gradient descent algorithm i told you what is the efficiency index for implementing machine learning or deep learning weights i told you weights w1 w2 w3 they are all weights so weights play a very important role in deciding the efficiency of your algorithm what you design so how uh, can i know which weight is better look at the graph very keenly i'll ex i'll explain you this algorithm in a very short way x axis what is x axis weights what is y axis can somebody tell what is cost i have already mentioned you cost is nothing but mean square error don't think cost in economical perspective cost is mean square error or cross entropy you can call it if you observe this graph what you see is for initial value of w what is cost what is error higher as you increase the weights what is going to happen cost has decreased look at the yellow color point so what do you understand so there is a problem here if your algorithm is not properly trained what is going to happen to the cycle after a low color point if you still increase the weights what is going to happen to the error it is going to increase the error so gradient descent algorithm there are many types but a very predominant algorithm is called a uh, stochastic gradient descent algorithm method which is used in most of the deep learning applications so understand in short way gradient descent algorithm will decide what are the appropriate weights because somebody may ask a question you are calling weights but how should i initialize weights you can give any value i am challenging you can give any value the deep learning gradient descent stochastic algorithm method will tell you what are the proper weights you have to choose for best performance of the system okay i'll talk about that in the next sessions this is a very important method called back propagation most of the methods which we have discussed till now they are called feed forward methods x goes to hidden layer input goes to hidden layer hidden layer goes to the output layer but back propagation layer what does it do is i gave x1 input to h1 i got y1 now i want to re calculate the weight i told you what did i tell you you have to reiterate it is an iterative process till you get satisfactory value of w where should i stop weight value till i get error minimal okay so back propagation algorithm you after you get y1 the weight is being resent back that is called weights are being resent to the input signal what is objective of back propagation to reiterate and decide and give us optimized weight okay so feed forward net uh, networks have uh, doesn't have that possibility back propagation networks have that excellent facility of back propagation implementation so i have discussed a lot till now let us look with a simple case study what we have tried uh, <coughs> with our students so one case study what we have done is you can look at this flow chart first we have initialized weights then somebody can look initializing threshold what do you mean by threshold 
the intensity from the images what we have captured you have to draw in the form of histograms that you call it as thresholds uh, i'll talk about that in the next slides next that weights initialization and threshold images are sent into the first network called feed forward function network what did we do there we have implemented feed forward network feed forward means input given to the weights weights sent to the activation function activation function sending it to the output next i want to reiterate my weights so what did we do we implemented back propagation algorithm in back propagation algorithm we gave a conditional loop what is the conditional loop we have given if my satisfaction of error i mean if my error is minimal if it is yes you can stop the training if my error is not minimal compared with the previous one what you can do is what what you can so if it is uh, no we applied stochastic gradient descent method i told you gradient descent method we have seen just now so it calculates what are the appropriate amount of weights can you see what is the last step over there update function what it what does it mean new calculated value of weight is updated where is it updated once again feed forward so this is a one simple uh, algorithm we have implemented on a flat conveyor on a laboratory setup where we have tried this algorithms for our machine vision system now what are some limitations of machine learning like i told you machine learning doesn't have capability on taking care of millions and millions of pictures simply speaking for complex models for image processing for now natural language processing or for audio processing machine learning is not a right platform you have to go deep inside what is it you have to go inside the deep learning if you look over here we noticed i can tell you very confidently machine learning algorithms are not appropriate for machine vision cases if you want good accuracy you can look at this diagram performance is higher in deep learning now a small question if you are looking at the deep learning x axis what is amount of data the images you are giving to the training the large the more the number of images you provide more the amount of data you provide good will be the performance of the system higher will be the performance of the system i gave examples of deep learning in surface recognition voice recognition many number of application even biological applications deep learning is being implemented now i have told you orally deep learning but look at this diagram very keenly you will understand what is deep learning method or deep learning network what is the input layer billions and millions or hundreds and thousands of pictures which you have in hand is the input layer what are you doing you are feeding that images onto the deep learning network what is the deep learning network doing it is trying to make a pattern and comparing features first it will do extraction of the features in hidden layer 1 still it it, it want to improvise it goes to the hidden layer 2 next hidden layer 3 so consequently such progression you can look over here uh, maybe the resolution is not good for this diagram but uh, most of you if you are new to the deep learning look at this diagram very keenly you will understand how a deep learning algorithm looks like okay this is a perfect diagram to understand uh, deep learning applied to the machine vision okay look there what is the first input for the deep learning input image where is that input image fed input image is fed to block 1 block 2 block 3 block 4 block 5 so how many blocks you can see there five blocks in five blocks can you identify similarity in four blocks convolution relu pooli convolution relu pooli can you recognize the word called relu i told you what is the best activation function used in machine vision rectified linear unit so relu is an activation function which is used in most of the machine vision applications what is the meaning of convolution here when you are uh, uh, going in depth of the understanding if you observe the sequence i have four set of hidden layers i mean uh, convolution neural network layers connected they are going to take your input image your input image first it will be in rgb scale you already i mean everybody might have familiar with the concept called rgb in capturing machine vision machine vision system so rgb scale consists of m cross n cross p m is number of pixels along x axis number of pixels along y axis p is nothing but if it is rgb okay p is equal to 
If it is a black and white picture, P is equal to one. Simply speaking, okay? It doesn't have red, green, or blue. It has only two, black or white. So convolution is nothing but on the image what you have taken as an input, it converts into pixels. If it is RGB intensity, M cross N cross P. If it is a normal black and white intensity, you'll be having pixels along x-axis, M cross N cross one. Because for black and white, it is one. Okay, in convolution, it takes care of all the uh, multiplication factors. Like convolution, simple definition, you can go like element by element, pixel quantities are multiplied with the weights. Somebody can ask me, sir, in convolution, what multiplication is happening? Image pixel matrix is multiplied with the weight matrix. Okay. That weight matrix is sent into the activation function. What is activation function? ReLU function. Now, what is ReLU function doing it? It is entering the input into pooling. Pooling is something very important terminology you should understand. Pooling means your high intensity picture. See, simply I'll tell you, pooling means High definition resolution, if it is converted into low definition resolution, it is called pooling. Simply, if I have 1024 or 700 by 700, if I convert into 200 by 200 pixel, that is called pooling. So first layer is finished. What is the next layer? Once again, convolution, once again, ReLU function, once again, pooling. So if you observe here, somebody may ask a question. Sir, how a machine vision system can identify cylindrical component, rectangular component, or any uh, conical component? That is the beauty here. Layer by layer, you are applying same convolution, ReLU function, pooling function. So repeatedly, your data is fed into the deep learning algorithm. So you don't have to feed anything to the deep learning network. It will try to identify particular components has only circular in nature. Particular components have taper in nature. So that convolution, ReLU, and pooling, successive layers of uh, networks connected is called CNN. I gave a brief introduction there. So you can mark my word, a very popular method of deep learning or our agenda gets satisfied if you understand what is CNN. CNN is called convolution neural networks. So as I have already told you, convolution neural network has input. I'll, give, I'll go very fast over here because you have already learned it. In CNN, what is the first layer? Input. What is the second layer? Convolution layer, ReLU layer, pooling layer. And second, convolution, ReLU, pooling. Can you understand it? You have same sequence going on. Convolution means converting high image pixel by multiplying with the weight matrix. Then that which is supplied to the uh, uh, ReLU function. ReLU means activation function. Next, that is sent into the pooling. Pooling means reducing a high dimensional picture into a low dimensional picture, you call it as pooling. Then that process is called as feature detection. So CNN is split into two stages. One is called feature detection. I hope general understanding. Feature detection means, I already told you, you don't have to teach software, this is cylinder, this is cone. That feature detection will understand out of 1,000 pictures he has input, I could see some pictures have only circular, some pictures have varying dimensions. So feature detection is very important in CNN. Now, CNN second stage has a very important concept called classification. In the first stage, it has understood how many varieties of components are placed on the conveyor. In classification, it will try to categorize them. How it will categorize? Can somebody see in classification what are the steps? First one is called flattening. Second one is called fully connected. Third one, can I uh, focus here over here, please? Softmax. Can you recollect this softmax? We have already learned in activation function. So the very important activation function used in machine vision system. In this application, what that I mean, what is the use of softmax? What is the probability of a vehicle? See, this algorithm is nothing but a traffic signal algorithm, whether it is a car or bike or lorry or bicycle. Those images are fed. It is trying to tell you what is the use of softmax there. It will try to tell you whether it is a car. What is the probability it could be car? What is the probability it could be lorry? What is the prob uh, probability it could be van? What is the probability it could be bicycle? Higher the probability, that is the final recognizable component. Now, what is called flattening? Flattening means, see, when you perform fault detection, 
what could be the size of the matrix if your inputs are 1000 images your uh, matrix size will be in thousands it could go even in uh, millions also so that millions of matrix is converted into vectors so that is called flattening layer by layer each layer by layer each vector by vector it will take it and it will feed the data into fully connected layer and keep the point in mind in cnn softmax is connected only to the fully connected layer back propagation concept doesn't work in cnn i am repeating once again back propagation is not at all implementable concept in cnn in fully connected layer it is connected to the softmax function so keep it in mind softmax is connected only at the output layer so i hope i have made you understand how what is algorithm of cnn giving the input convolution apply relu function apply pooling function then you understand what are the features on the conveyor then flatten the matrix convert into vectors send it to the fully connected networks independent weights those independent weights are fed into the fully connected layer finally finding the probability i mean finding the feature of the product and classifying that comes under the classification algorithm so we have done lot of understanding on deep learning versus machine learning but main point is to implement deep learning cpu is not uh, advisable you need gpu a graphics uh, port terminal is additionally required okay a graphics additional graphics uh, processor is connected then only deep learning could be very uh, comfortably implemented otherwise it gives lesser accuracy remaining points are all self understandable i'll go into the main concept of application okay now other algorithm method in deep learning is called rnn rnn is also called recurrent neural network so in recurrent neural network the popular algorithm is called lstm which is called long short term memory that algorithm has very wide amount of applications what are the applications one on one in image classification in image captioning in sentiment analysis even in video classification this rnn algorithm is applied so in rnn algorithm you can do back propagation technique unlike cnn method self organizing maps so self organizing maps application is self organizing maps uh, is applied for random data you want to build a system on a node so what you can do is you can take that complete data set it will try to identify feature extraction that can be done in the self organizing maps then auto encoder auto encoder is also one of a deep learning algorithm in this if you focus very keenly it has two components encoding and decoding so in encoding what is going to happen is it will try to compress the image whatever input you are taking that image is being compressed after analyzing that compressed image is being expand i mean uh, increased with the pixel intensity by mapping or i can call it as after padding operation it is giving the final output so auto encoders are used mainly in dimensionality reduction okay and in the feature detection this is a very popular algorithm which can be implemented now i'll enter into basic idea on machine vision system uh, i uh, theoretical concepts i'll skip off which are not required because i want to show you how this can be implemented in matlab and python so sorry for this some theoretical basic topics i'll try to skip up on i'll try to make it faster so that you can understand practical uh, implementation of this so a general machine vision system how exactly it looks like look at the slides over there you have a camera you have a sensor lens fit in it and a conveyor system on which parts are being moving continuously then you have a light source which is connected i mean all these systems are connected to a monitor terminal which in turn has serial connection devices which can continuously transfer the data for the feedback in this according to me in machine vision system because there was a question how to build a machine vision system so i will tell you i tell you a small case study how did we build a machine vision system we have taken three set of webcams simple anybody can try okay so you don't have to have a high sophistication i mean high sophisticated camera but important role is selecting the camera is very important then choosing the light source most of the people make mistake in this if light source is not appropriate your output from machine vision system is also not appropriate so i am going to focus on that how to choose a light source 
what should be the way the light source should be connected. If you look at these three diagrams over there, you have a work a base platform on which workplace is there. Backlighting method. In backlighting method, if you see there, the main focus is you have to ensure noise is to be minimal. So in one of the important point in machine vision system is noise reduction. So that method is implemented with this. Then you have axial diffuse lightning. Axial diffuse lightning method is very popularly used for understanding the surface uh, finish of the components, surface measurement. Then structured light. Structured light is mostly used for inspection. To accept or reject the component, structured light method is one way. You have to see simple point is camera is fit at the top of a conveyor. But how should be the light source? That's what we are understanding from this slide. Then you have dark illumination. Dark illumination method is used in the low contrast applications. And bright field illumination method is used for the high contrast applications. Then in a very specified cases, diffused dome lighting method is used. What is the main focus of it? The main focus over here is you can prevent blob in captured images. Blob is nothing but flickering on the image. To prevent the flickering of that images, this diffused dome lightning system is being used. I mean, preferred. So in machine vision system, you can go for one dimensional, you can go for two dimensional, you can go for three dimensional. If you see over here on the diagram, you could see you have a conveyor system, you have three cameras fit at the top, which is connected to the controller, which in turn is taking the input to the processor. I mean, sending the data finding. But one dimensional system is mostly used for, you could look over there, in a plastic industry or in sheet rolling industry application, you can go for this machine vision system. Two dimensional system. Two dimensional machine vision system is predominantly used for the anomaly detection on the surfaces. To prevent the anomalies, 2D machine vision system is implemented. Okay, if you look over there, uh, the camera is chosen is inside 500 which is, uh, uh, I mean, spreading the intensity onto the surface, that intensity could be split up into independent pixel ranges. If you look at the first diagram, you could see uh, there are resolutions indicated, 480 by 640, 780 by 1024, 1200 by 1800. So what intensity of the image capturing you can take? So minimum requirement is VGA captured image is enough for medium scale applications for selecting the camera. In three-dimensional machine vision system, you don't require one. You have to place three cameras with independent orientations. Those three cameras mounted will capture the uh, surface, I mean, along all the three dimensions, and it will try to tell you whether it, it is an acceptable or a rejectable component. The better one is a brake pad inspection, which uses the triangulation technique, okay? In machine vision system, what are the stages in it? You are capturing the image, you are using the proper light source. But what are the steps in machine vision system? You have image acquisition. What does it mean? You capture the image, that image which can be seen by human eye, it can be seen by the computer in a different way. That is called pixel representation. That is called analog to digital conversion. Next, you have image processing. Image processing is nothing but you capture the image. Image has signal to noise ratio higher, it has a blob, it has flickering. So you have to remove the noise. How can you remove the noise? By using certain filters, Gaussian filter, Laplacian filter. Many filters are uh, available which you can apply in the image processing. What is the next stage? Image segmentation. So image segmentation is nothing but we have seen in the previous network, uh, uh, convolution, relu, and pooling. That is called image segmentation. You are trying to identify what are the uh, compar I mean, what are the classification present on the component? Then you have image analysis. Image analysis basically talks about size, shape, and so on. Pattern recognition. Pattern recognition comes like, what is desired and what exactly I am able to capture? So pattern recognition, I'll give example in the next slides. Like I told you, I don't want to consume a lot of time on theory. I have given you an overview of the machine vision system. I'll skip this. So basically, I mean, detailed explanation I have added over here. At the end of the session, I'll show you a web where I'm going to upload this PPT. Participants can download this PPT and uh, go through them, okay? So I'm going to skip this theoretical stuff, which are all familiar. I mean, 
how exactly you can do it how exactly you can implement it okay now i enter into the practical case study so this is our case study 2 which we have tried in our laboratory setup that is called high speed line scan based inspection system okay so in this what did we do is we have uh, taken a usb cable for a webcam we have mounted on our conveyor system with a small setup camera 1 camera 2 and camera 3 and so on what did we do is a small on a roller conveyor we have components so first important thing uh, or requirement which is uh, important for us is on the conveyor what is the field of view if you look at the left hand side diagram i have added a small empirical equation which is available in a research article which we have picked up from it so a field of view is calculated by 2 into working distance into tan alpha by 2 where alpha is nothing but uh, the focus angle which is coming from the camera lens alpha is equal to 2 into arc tan that is tan inverse of d by 2f where d is the diameter of the lens f is the focal length we have taken 1 meter as a distance we have calculated the value of alpha and finally we have noticed what is called field of view after noticing field of view we have decided this i mean how much is the range of field of view that we have fed into the programmable logic system so if you look at our algorithm what we what we have done is we have uh, selected a scene the scene is nothing but the conveyor system on which we have tried to capture the image okay that is image acquisition scene constraint we have made the calculation we have looked up on the image uh, obtainable quality of the webcam i mean the camera what we have chosen vga camera then we have gone into the image processing in image processing what did we do i see this is one beautiful topic which i thought of sharing somebody can everybody can understand what is scene constraint what is image acquisition most of the people struggle in image processing because we are focused mostly in mechanical design of mechanical system so in image processing what did we do is the captured image we have split into 28 by 28 we have taken only two dimensional analysis so 28 pixels along x axis we have compressed it simply speaking we have compressed first rgb colored picture we converted into gray picture gray picture we have converted into compressed one by pooling operation i mean to say by compressing operation image processing what did we do is we made a histogram out of the pixels if you notice it we have taken all the pixel values right hand side graph you can see pixel values versus light intensity the light intensity what we have obtained from the camera in the processor with respect to the pixel values then we have performed segmentation after converting that into pixels we have performed segmentation after performing segmentation what did we notice is somebody can tell how did you perform the final image observation what did we do is wherever there is irregularities we made that into dark scale wherever there is a uh, object which we are supposed to measure we made that into white scale so everybody can understand gray scale is nothing but black and white intensity so unnecessary components we made it into black shading indicator required indications we made it into uh, ones okay that is a white indicator so by that we were able to identify what is the diameter of the hole on the workpiece so that we have implemented by using a uh, same previous method like stochastic gradient descent method but we made it in a shorter simplified manner now uh, a simple uh, it's not a project it's simple uh, simulation work what you can observe if you look at this case study in this case study what you can see is input pattern what is input pattern the image what you are obtaining from your camera that image is digitized can you look at the left hand side graph left hand side graph input pattern is nothing but the digitized image that digitized image where is it being sent it is sent into hidden layer 1 hidden layer 2 and what is the function used in the hidden layer sigmoid function so can i tell this convolution neural network no this was done very long back so the at that time deep learning algorithms were not there so we have used sigmoid function so sigmoid activation function was helping us in identifying from zeros to ones so what we are able to find is we are able to find 
unnecessary components as black shading that is black intensity and required shading as white intensity if you look at the right hand side image on a workpiece they have done a contour the 6 is a number which you have contour now <coughs> on that image how many pixel split has been done 28 along x axis 28 along y axis so how many pixels you have in that image 28 into 28 784 pixels are there to indicate one image understand if my pixel is 1024 by 1024 what is your uh, number of pixels 1 lakh plus you can understand it right so for a simple image of 28 by 28 how many pixels we are getting 784 pixels pixel 1 pixel 2 pixel 3 pixel 4 so all the pixel inputs are fed into the deep learning algorithm okay these are simple case studies we have learned i mean we are looking at it orally but let us enter into main focus so like i have already mentioned you i thought of sharing my experience how we tried machine vision in matlab how we tried python in matlab i'll share for the next 20 or 30 minutes okay so in matlab i mean for almost a decade for the past uh, 10 years onwards that was not so developed so in image processing in matlab basically it treats your image as matrix i told you in the previous slide what is the matrix of that image 784 elements that is 28 rows and 28 columns now every pixel you call it as an element so matlab i have told you already it can import image i mean to say matlab has a facility of importing your images captured by even by your cell phone also cell phone images also can be directly captured into matlab and it can divide that into uh, pixel intensities then rgb intensities m cross n cross p where p is equal to 3 okay you can see here the image read by the computer is in terms of ones and zeros now if you look at this component can you identify what is the shape of the component zeros are nothing but can you see there zeros are nothing but there is no predictable observation which means it is of not required ones ones are nothing but where material is present over there now i was i was telling you orally how to i mean i was telling you generally a statement like you can import images into matlab how can you import i equal to im read so basically matlab has two platforms one is programming platform by uh, keywords second one is by graphical programming graphical programming is a very simple one that is also called as tool boxes i'll show you in the next slides so this was the basic matlab what is the command for importing the image in matlab im read whatever is your image name dot jpg so it requires your uh, type of the image also it will show you the image so if you see there what is the size of that image number 1 496 by 600 496 rows 496 sorry 600 columns and rgb so 3 is nothing but layer of that image what is l gray is equal to rgb to gray i told you if you are somebody can ask me sir why do i have to convert an colored image into gray image if you have colored image it will take high processing time it is not at all easier task so it is advisable to convert your colored image into gray image so the l gray equal to rgb to gray is nothing but converting your colored image into gray image then what is i am show i am show is nothing but display my output next <coughs> l i am write is nothing but you write all those inputs in a displayed fashion but these are all additional alternatives but one case is enough you can repeat with other alternative keywords now these are all fine but i want to implement deep learning in matlab can you help me yes there is an answer answer is matlab in 2012 version they have implemented a, a toolbox or a system called alexnet alexnet is nothing but a already existing algorithm in which thousands and thousands of classification of parts are done so they have minimized your work that is called alexnet is a toolbox in algorithm okay if you see there different components pencil car whatever they are already predefined in the matlab now let us look at a small demo i was telling you with my students we have done with a small webcam on a machine vision this was a source code 
And uh, you can look at the reference. We have taken it from MathWorks itself. So uh, the website is present at the bottom. What did we do is, you are using a camera, but how do you know the captured images by your camera are good? You have to calibrate the camera. So NNNet equal to AlexNet. We are taking the predefined toolbox from the MATLAB, which we are defining it by our uh, USB connected uh, webcam onto it. But look at the right hand side. Uh, if you are focusing on the right hand side, what are they doing to the image? Didn't I tell you? If you are in terms of high intensity, it is not advisable to do with uh, high pixels. You have to convert that into a low pixel value. After converting that pixel, you in resize is nothing but to resize your image into processable number of in pixels. Then what we are doing is an existing algorithm is used for retraining it. Retraining is nothing but your see simple fashion. Being a mechanical background, we may not spend months and months on writing algorithms. Maybe for a postgraduate, for a PhD scholar, it is required. But for a normal uh, student who want to implement machine vision, he don't uh, like to or he cannot uh, do uh, spend a lot of energy on algorithm development. So he can take already existing algorithm like this and he can reuse it. What is the meaning of reuse or retraining? Take the existing algorithm, feed your inputs. What is your application? Measure the dimension, measure the surface finish. You feed those inputs in that algorithm. That is called retraining an existing network. So like I have already told you, when I say using the MATLAB, I don't mean you have to be expert programmer. Without programming knowledge, you can implement your machine vision applications by using computer machine vision toolbox in MATLAB. If you see over here in the diagram, in MATLAB, uh, can you look at this slide? Since our topic is a very hot in the field, you can see even the software called MATLAB, which I was using for past decade, six months back, almost one year back, they started using MATLAB deep learning. So you understand the meaning of it. In the latest version, in 2020 only, they have embedded deep learning in MATLAB software. Before 2020, you can see here. <coughs> this was MATLAB to 2018. Okay, in 2018, they have only left side diagram. Can you see when you open MATLAB, you have apps. In apps, you have something called machine learning. Neural network clustering, neural network uh, pattern recognition. If you ask me, sir, how to implement machine vision, go for neural network pattern clustering or go for neural network pattern recognition. Somebody asked me, sir, I'm stuck up or I'm not able to work out an image processing. See here. In the right hand side diagram, you can see a toolbox called image processing and computer vision toolbox. In that, what is called camera calibrator? Checking how efficient is your camera and thresholder, identifying the pixel intensities. Then you have image acquisition. Can you see here something? A star symbol is there, image acquisition. What is the meaning of that star symbol image acquisition? I'm saying once again, people who are enthusiastic in trying machine vision, Take a small webcam if you are using desktop. If you have laptop, you don't need it also. If you are using a laboratory computers in your universities or colleges, take a webcam, connect it to your computer and go to MATLAB and go to this image acquisition. Just open image acquisition. What is this camera? What is the pixel? What is the resolution? Everything will be displayed there. So a very beautiful hardware interaction is not possible with even Python also. MATLAB has a very beautiful hardware integration, which image process acquisition. Can you read the word over there? That's a very beautiful object available with the image processing with uh, MATLAB. There are other options which you can explore if you are uh, enthusiastic in trying some projects. Now, to come to the main point, how can I try deep learning in MATLAB? Can you see here in deep learning of MATLAB 2020A, there are already defined algorithms embedded in it. This diagram is showing you some names which they have embedded in it. If you see here, there are a lot. They, are, they have a recurring neural network. They have a exception network. They have dark network. They have multiple cases. But I will show you, sorry, how to build using deep learning model in MATLAB. Can you see the first block? Blank network. Select the blank network. After selecting blank network, can you see this uh, second diagram which is given over there? 
you have softmax layer you have classification layer you have regression layer and you have a uh, yolo and lot of layers are there and if you look at the model you can see their image input you can give the image what is the next observe the diagram which is built over there in image input you have convolution you have a, a pooling system you have fc for example i just highlight uh, by using a pen can you recognize this input then what is this convolution then this is called pooling activation function then fully connected layer softmax can you tell me what is this a practical implementation of cnn if you are listening cautiously i taught you i mean we have given you understanding on what is cnn if you see the red color dots what have pointed directly pick this block place here pick this block place here pick this block and place here that is the beauty of toolbox see this is not for a high scale if you want to implement machine vision and observe for a medium level understanding you can try this okay connect it with the arrows and after connecting it you can simulate it and after simulating you can export this model data in different cases for example can you see here in this diagram what are the solving options in solver what is the solver they have indicated sgdm what is the abbreviation of sdgm stochastic gradient descent method i have taught you what is a gradient descent method what are the other methods you have adam method you have rms roots mean square method so three solvers are very popularly available in all the solvers gradient descent method what is the name stochastic gradient descent method is a very popular method used in uh, solving the deep learning problems now some of you can ask can i transfer my matlab program into different case yes you can what the graphical programming what you have created you can convert that into c program you can convert that into c++ program so a uh, matlab provides you the option for code generation in intel processing in a uh, uh, tensor flow even in arm uh, processor you can do it and the matlab has uh, advanced features for uh, implementing that in pytorch mxnet and tensor flow okay now at the final everything is fine how can i see my results in deep learning look at it what is the classification you are seeing in the left hand side diagram what is the probability of that component it could be x1 x2 say there are five components what is the uh, probability that my product is going to be cylindrical so here it will give you what is the probability of particular component to be the recognizable one and right hand side diagram if you see what is the accuracy of my algorithm and what is the loss comparatively somebody can ask me what do you mean by loss did i train my system properly no suppose you say my result is not satisfactory what should i do increase the hidden layers simple logic increase the hidden layer you get higher processing you get improvised performance now what is the last stage of topic is you can connect it with your hardware also you prepare a pre trained network connect it to your instrumentation i mean your camera that camera is being sent into the quantization quantization means initializing the weight and categorizing the data then send it to quantized network quantized int8 is nothing but a very popular network which has 120 plus hidden layers you understand what is the time it will take to calculate and it will give you the output so that is the best layer that is also called vgg layer in deep learning algorithm which is finally validated by using the processor now some curious uh, person will uh, observe how can i use python for machine vision so python is also not a simple platform python has lot of libraries for image processing what are the libraries very predominantly students and research community use opencv numpy skypy pil and uh, some other are there scikit and skit and simple cv pmagicn pscr there are description given for independent cases but let me tell you if you want to implement machine vision objects for uh, a pattern recognition for uh, face recognition for object data recognition open cv is preferred and numpy and skypy are used for uh, removing the i mean in image processing you can go for numpy and sky skypy then pil p i l l o is nothing but they are used for filtering and enhancement of the images then remaining like a uh, skit or so on they are used for 
template matching, or you can call it as pattern recognition of the applications. People prefer these libraries. Simply speaking, install Python, install these libraries, or you can directly go for <coughs> install Anaconda. In Anaconda, you have multiple platforms like Jupyter, or uh, Spider, or uh, these libraries are predefinedly installed. You don't have to search for this. Okay, a simple example. And let me give you uh, even um, I have I have spent less amount of time on Python because Python doesn't have toolboxes like MATLAB, which means uh, in a, a student cannot spend a lot of time in algorithm development. So in Python, the point is you have to create the algorithms by yourself for your application. Say I'm not good at algorithms. Adopt the algorithm. Feed your program. Feed your task. So what I'm trying to say is. In Python, you have to do machine vision image processing only by programming. How? You have to import the libraries. You can see there are three columns. I just wanted to show you. What is column one? In column one, I have written, I mean, I added a small case study program on installing PIP. PIP is nothing but a library to run machine vision. Then I opened the image. After that, I have rotated the image. I have reduced the intensity of the image. Then I converted the colored image into gray image. In column one, look at the last two lines. I converted the colored RGB image into uh, a gray image. Then second column, I imported NumPy. I used a library called NumPy. You have seen in the previous slide. Then after importing that NumPy, to plot, we require a, a toolbox or a platform called Matplotlib. I imported the matplotlib also. Then I read the image. Then I, I mean, uh, I am read is used for reading the image. Then I am show is for displaying the image. Wait key is used for giving how much is the time. Till you press any key, the image will not go. Then destroy all the windows means close all the windows. Then in column two, last uh, lines indicate converting a low resolution image into high resolution image and a high resolution image into low resolution image. How can you do that? And last third column, somebody may say, sir, I don't have only one image. I have multiple images. So what you do is you can save that in a folder or you can save that in a file. Treat that file as a path. So the third column program shows you how to import the sequence of images <coughs> in the program. Now, I have shown you the theory, I have shown you the basics, I have shown you the trends. I focused only on MATLAB and Python because that was my area of expertise. What are the challenges faced by engineers in implementing deep learning? So the challenges is nothing but selecting the hidden layers. Most of the people, uh, I mean, most of the simulation results goes wrong because of hidden layer. There is no head and rule for identifying the hidden layer. What you can do is, you have to perform iterative based simulation. So that is one challenge in implementing the deep learning techniques. Then the next one is how much image you are giving to it. Deep learning algorithms have certain problem or deep learning methodology has a problem that infinite number amount of images, infinite amount of data create certain problem in processing that could be uh, encountered by selecting a proper GPU for your application. So these are the challenges which are faced in the deep learning. But compared with the challenges, I can say deep learning like convolution neural network or recursive neural network, uh, any algorithm what I described till now have a very good advantages when compared with the challenges. And these are the references which I was uh, using for preparing this uh, presentation. You can uh, refer any of the books. Starting students who want to work on Python for machine vision, Look at, look at the second row. Uh, image processing and acquisition using Python is a very predominantly used uh, book for a lot of algorithms. And uh, for implementing in a higher deep level uh, learning by Python, the second, I mean, the, this book is very predominantly used. And for understanding normal algorithms for machine vision or image processing or computer, you can refer the book by J.R. Parker, which I have referred. And I have taken some open source ports from uh, uh, GitHub for Python uh, program. So with this, I'll uh, wind up the discussion uh, of this uh, presentation. I could cover what I can in the stipulated time, but still, if there are anyone who would like to contact me personally, you can mail me. You can come in contact with me in LinkedIn. 
I told you this PPT will be posted in the bottom portal, which I post regularly in my lectures. So anybody can uh, download that PPT and you can uh, <coughs> learn about it if you want after the session. Now I'll uh, hand over the, to the chair. Any questions from the participants or any feedback or any queries, I'll be ready to tackle. Thank you. <laughs> Sure. Uh, is it by any tool or is it by any because uh, that process is different for different software if you are trying to uh, do in matlab you have to instead of using the im gray you have to use im color over there in python we have directly converted because Converting from the gray image to color, color image to gray, it depends on the software. What software you are using, based on that, you have the keyword for conversion. Sir, I have one question. Uh, sure. Can you briefly explain the calibration, importance of calibration of camera? Uh, calibration of the camera. Yes, sir. How sir, to you do know that uh, you need to have a calibration. So where, uh, see, uh, where the importance of calibration? Just I want to know that. Uh, see, basically, when it comes to calibration, you might be using any camera available in the market, or you might be using a webcam or VGA. <laughs> what you have to do is the image. Sorry. Okay. The yes, image captured by the camera may not be satisfactory. You may not know by your visual observation. So what you can do is, uh, it depends on the tool also, sir. So my habitual practices, I mean, my experiences, we used to connect our camera uh, by using RS-232 cable or any USB cable to the computer. And we used to go to the tools available called calibration. Because if you look at the laboratory experiments, laboratory experiments which we purchase the manufacturers already embeds the tool called calibration in their software that you can do it. But if a student or any researcher is trying to understand personally by himself, or as you said, you want to calibrate your webcam, simply speaking, what you can do is you have to select any calibrator tool. So my experience, according to me is we used to connect our camera to the MATLAB software in MATLAB software. We go to the machine vision toolbox. In machine vision toolbox, we have an option called camera calibrator. When you select that option called camera calibrator, what it will do is it will try to activate your camera. So take some pictures by your camera. After taking the pictures, that camera calibrator will see what is signal to noise ratio, which means I told you, you take any image, the thresholding, the segmentation, everything are measured in the form of histograms that histograms are measured, which means the camera which you have used, that image will be completely analyzed by the calibrator. Then it will say, in your captured image, you have this number of blobs, this number of intensities, this is your thresholding. By that observation, you will understand my camera is calibrated to this much level. So calibration perfectly, there is no tool available in general. What I use is, we used to use MATLAB toolbox, computer vision, uh, camera calibrators. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay. Okay. When you are talking of uh, implementing into the hardware, just now I have shown you in a slide, MATLAB is compatible only to some platforms. Platforms are like ARM controlling processor. For example, Raspberry processor is a very predominantly used hardware for connecting to the machine vision systems. So if you want to talk about, uh, I mean, it depends on the user knowledge also. If a student is good enough in Arduino processor or uh, Raspberry processor, he can go for LabVIEW. I didn't uh, teach this word because LabVIEW is, a, is also one of a good software connected with the hardware processing. I mean to say, LabVIEW has a very good compatibility with the hardware. But when it comes to uh, MATLAB, it has only Intel uh, ARMVID processor, ARM controller, 
only three types of hardwares are compatible with the matlab you can go to the matwax web oh, sorry matwax website they gave the list of hardwares which are compatible with your cameras yes sir thank you sir and uh, sir one more uh, uh, sir one more to one more question sir uh, sure, from mohan manju uh, which okay. types of topic we can select using deep learning for research work uh, which type of topics you can select using think, deep learning for research work research work okay okay so when it comes to the research work uh, like i have told you that is a very emerging field currently now uh, which i have shared uh, with all of the participants you can look i mean you might have gone through these uh, methods which i have shared with there so the current running uh, applications are minimizing the noise that is uh, in speech recognition or in uh, pattern recognition simply speaking in automation identifying the defective parts simply in mean, otherwise you can understand implementing quality control by using deep learning that is one application one research work which you can try on yes. and other case studies are then they may not look properly to the mechanical engineering application but other applications which are widely used in the current scenario are text to the image conversion or audio to the text conversion if you show a picture of a text that could be read by the uh, output so that those are one of other applications which are used in audio processing speech processing and so on but in this i would recommend for i didn't uh, implementing better algorithm i mean i mean to say try to work on for combining with multiple algorithms i did not highlight in the uh, lecture because of the time problem what researchers do is they don't go only for one algorithm they try to apply stochastic gradient algorithm with the deep algorithm sorry with the principal component analysis so what you can do is for a particular application that could be quality control that could be inspection that could be finding the anomaly i mean to say finding the defects so any variable cases of applications you can take but thing is try multiple algorithms for example i have seen a thesis where that is a doctoral thesis he was trying to implement application on quality control by using five different deep learning algorithms that is his thesis he was trying cnn he was trying rnn he was trying som he was trying <coughs> sorry principal component analysis so he tried with different case studies different situations so this could be a probable research problem in the future thank you sir thank you very much if uh, any other question uh, if no questions i uh, sir i thank you professor i thank you very much for your uh, excellent uh, informative speech and uh, it was your presentation was very nice and really whatever uh, we had some uh, uh, some uh, doubts it was uh, clarified by you thanks uh, thank you very much professor i request uh, dr m mohandas uh, to give a vote of thanks yes sir uh, thank you uh, respected uh, kiran kumar our most valued uh, invited guest uh, respected ramesh babu sir head of our department uh, uh, other coordinators of this webinar uh, uh, professor gobinath and mr kumar zami ladies and gentlemen uh, it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion uh, on behalf of department of mechanical engineering sri vengeshwara college of engineering and on my own behalf i extend a very hearty thanks to uh, speaker ms kiran kumar for accepting our invitation and a wonderful presentation we are all inspired by your great explanation about the relationship between uh, ai and artificial intelligence ai and deep learning and machine learning and the applications of neural network matlab python etc in mechanical engineering especially in the field of quality control i would like to take this opportunity to, rec to record our hearty thanks to our head of the department dr ramesh babu sir for the excellent support and guidance he has extended to all of us for conducting this webinar i also extend my thanks to my colleagues and coordinators uh, professor gopinath and mr kumar sami 
for the uh, enormous cooperation in the organization of this webinar. And uh, finally, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all the participants who have actively participated in this webinar. Thank you very much. And uh, dear participants, the feedback form for this event is shared in the chat box and it will be available only for the next 15 minutes. Once you fill the feedback form and submit, then the e certificate will be generated automatically. And Kumarasam, Mr. Please ensure that the feedback form is available in the chat box in both the Google Meet and as well as uh, YouTube, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, no, so once again, thank you very much, sir. Kiran, sir. Thank, thank you, Kumar, sir. Thank you very much. Very nice presentation. And uh, I think we we hope uh, we will continue the uh, the things. Uh, we have a lot of uh, activities uh, with you. We, we may come forward uh, with some project also. So please uh, guide us so that uh, we can bring a lot of projects. Uh, even we can have some collaborative work also along with you. So please sure, uh, uh, help us in this regard. Particularly, you are telling that the new research is going on deep learning and image processing. So, sure, so in that, I request you, if you have any problem or we will find out, we will come out with problem. We will commonly do some research paper also, sir. If possible, if your organization permits, uh, we will also request uh, for that also. Sure, sir. Any collaboration is... Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank yes. you, Thank you, Kumar. Really, it's a wonderful session. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Thank you Thank sir. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Yes, thank you. Thank you, actually, sir. it was continuing from the Amurta lecture. Now, I able to see the same thing now. So, I think we hope you will have more uh, bright future in this area. And definitely, we will be seeing a great person in deep learning and image processing in future. And we may require a lot of help from your side. Thank you. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you very much. Sure. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. More some sir, I think uh, we will we'll wait for some more minutes because around 46 members are there. Uh, Kumar Swami sir, we will wait for uh, 15 more minutes. Uh, let them complete and we will finalize. Okay. I request all the participants to complete your uh, feedback form and uh, immediately after the filling up the feedback form, you will be getting a certificate uh, through your email.